Hi, welcome to the CPM Clips, today we are going to review the Peripheral Season 1 Episode 1. Ok, let's dive into the episode. Episode 1 of The Fringe begins in London, in the year 2099. A man sits on a seat, a little kid approaches him. He asks her what wreck she's gotten into now. The young lady, Aelita, answers that he got her into that wreck. They discuss how she once saved him. Aelita claims she is, even currently, saving a world, simply not this one. She expresses farewell to the man she calls Wolf. She squints and the little kid's face develops clear. A short scene shows us a table holding a white model of a house, its encompassing region and individuals in it. We shift to Blue Edge Mountains in the USA in the year 2032. Flynn Fisher tackles tasks around the house. She gives her mom, a lady who has as of late lost her visual perception, some espresso and a few medications. At the point when she sees that a few pills are missing, she goes to the trailer outside their home and asks her sibling, Burton, about them. He is playing a game with a VR headset on. He tells her he has something significant coming this evening that will give them enough cash for additional meds. He gives her his headset, so she can win the level for him. Flint enters the game, taking on her sibling's persona. She effectively dominates the match, finding a guide that the others hadn't had the option to see as this while. She advises Burton to wire the cash to her. Afterward, she spins through town and pulls out cash from an ATM. There, she meets Tommy, the town sheriff. They talk about his impending wedding and he advises her he's requested wedding adornments to be made at the print shop where she works. At the print shop, Flynn's partner Billy and prods her about as yet really liking Tommy. Two young men at the shop show her the embellishments Tommy requested. At the point when they understand there is an additional puppet of the lucky man, one of the young men breaks it. Flynn later tracks down the wrecked puppet and keeps it. The young men then give her a crate that came for Burton. It has a metal contraption in it and was paid for by a Colombian organization called Milagros Calderon. At home, Burton uncovers that he was asked to beta test this sim since he crossed level 100 on another game. But, it wasn't him yet Flynn who had done that, since they've been offered. At home, Burton uncovers that he was asked to beta test this sim since he crossed level 100 on another game. But, it wasn't him yet Flynn who had done that, since they've been offered truckload of cash for the gig, Flynn consents to test it. Burton puts it on for herself and she counts back from 10. At the point when she opens her eyes she's in the sim, in Burton's body, riding a motorbike. She's in a brilliant city with enormous sculptures approaching over it. A voice in her mind invites her to the sim. At the point when she says she can feel everything, the voice tells her she can likewise feel torment. She needs to do anything the voice says to procure her keep. The voice directs her to a lavish mixed drink party in Buckingham Royal Residence, facilitated by an association known as the R.I. or then again Exploration Foundation. It drives her to a lady named Mariel and advises her to persuade her to bring him back home. Flynn, in Burton's body, figures out how to do as such. In the vehicle, the voice advises her to take the glass ampule from her pocket and open it right in front of Mario. Flynn does so and is gone after by the driver, a robot, yet overwhelms it. The voice in her mind muses about the power it has in just establishing words in Flynn's mind, similar to seeds. Flynn drives the vehicle to an impasse. At the point when she says the words have shown up the wall before her opens and she drives inside to find a lady remaining there. She is the lady whose voice has been in Flynn's mind. She tells Flynn they will continue tomorrow. Flynn escapes the sim and goes on and on about how genuine it feels. She feels a piece tipsy on standing up however at that point chooses to go get her mother's prescriptions. At a bar, she distinctly takes a gander at a gathering of four men and two of them meet her outside. She gives them the cash for one pill however the men guarantee it isn't sufficient. They have a go at bothering her for more administrations when an impaired man, with only one arm, emerges from the bar. Connor connects his mono wheel to a bigger vehicle and undermines the men into giving Flynn the medication. He and Flynn head home. Different men return to the bar to see an elderly person in a suit sitting tight for them. He gives them a dressing down for being harassed by Connor. At home, Flynn sees her sibling slouched over in torment in his trailer. He has marks engraved into his skin across his arms and back that are delicately shining and appear to be the reason for the aggravation. In the first part of the day, Flynn washes her mom's hair. Her mom uncovers that Burton has been giving her his pills, to assist her arrangement with the aggravation. Afterward, in Burton's trailer, Flynn apologizes for blaming him for taking the pills. She then signs onto the sim, energized, yet winds up in a medical procedure room, unfit to move. The lady from prior is there and she tells her that Flynn can't leave the sim without her authorization. The specialists start the most common way of eliminating Flynn's eyeball and supplanting it with the one they took from Mario. The lady advises Flynn to get control over her heart and control her psyche to manage the aggravation. Flynn does so and the lady lets her rest in Apos. The following time she opens her eyes she ends up in a vehicle, sitting across the lady. The lady takes her to a structure and uses her new eye to get access inside. They arrive at a chamber with an upset pyramid swinging from the roof. 
the lady discusses giving Flynn a gift and advises her to put her own eye, not Marion's, to the focal point. Flynn does so and jolts from the aggravation of a laser shooting squarely into her eye yet the lady pushes her head forward. Out of nowhere, a man shows up and the lady advises her to deal with him since he is there to kill them both. Flynn attempts however the man binds her hands behind her back. He utilizes a firearm that fires sonic punches to go after the lady and cause her to uncover her expectations. Flynn gets her hand out and in the process sees the skin strip off to uncover a robot arm under. She helps the lady, who takes off, yet the man then, at that point, turns the weapon on Flynn. In her own world, Flynn awakens and commitments to it absolutely no point ever sign onto that sim in the future. The following day Billy and attempts to encourage Flynn. Flynn concedes to having eyes for Tommy. She then discusses the sim and speculates that it's really a genuine spot where she possesses a robot body. While at the print shop, Flynn gets a call from Wolf who takes a stab at advance notice her about some looming risk yet she cuts the call. Somewhere else, a police officer sees two dubious vehicles and follows them yet they vanish. At the point when he stops his own, a man threatens to use a weapon on him from behind and advises him to remain in the street. An imperceptible power wrecks the police officer. It ends up being one of the vehicles shrouded in imperceptibility. Flynn is shutting the print shop when the lights glint and Wolf's voice is heard through every one of the machines around her. He guarantees her life is in harm's way and there is an abundance of 9 million bucks on her head. Burton and his other ex-military companions are lounging around a fire when Flynn shows up and lets him know what occurred. They at first believe it's a joke however when they utilize a robot to check, they see a gathering of dubious individuals coming towards them. The episode ends with it. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon so you can watch more videos like this, and share with your friends. Thanks for watching.